Welcome to the lectures on service management principles. I am Christian Grönroos from Hanken School of Economics. The theme today is customer perceived quality and uh, its uh, management implications. Now, <clears throat> looking at quality, uh, we need to make a distinction between how the supplier defines quality and how the customers define quality, because they differ as it turns out. The firm's quality definition is uh, frequently dominated by technical aspects, technical aspects of the product or the service. Whereas it turns out that the customer's quality definition is dominated by behavioral aspects. Of course, not neglecting technical aspect, but uh, dominated by behavioral aspects. And easily a conflict then is created between the firm who is operating based on its definition of what is good quality and the customer who consumes and experiences based on his or her or the organization's definition of what is good quality. Let's take a, a case example. A, an industrial maintenance firm uh, operating on several industries, maintaining a range of processes, machines and equipment. Uh, fairly big firm uh, which uh, realized that they have problems, problems keeping their customers. And uh, the problems developed so that they were losing more customers than they could, they could get new ones. And a profit profitability problem was around the corner. And of course, a study was done and customers said that quality is low. They don't like the maintenance quality. quality. Now, the firm thought that uh, they are as good as any competitor in maintaining various types of, of machinery and equipment and processes. They had the people well trained and they had the backup resources of all sorts. Now, a continued study was done and it told them that technically speaking, the customers were very satisfied with how maintenance was taken care of. However, they disliked the processes, they disliked the behavior of the technicians, their lack of communication skill, the lack of interest to listen and answer questions, lack of flexibility in the way that the firm operated and, and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> there was indeed a discrepancy between the firm's quality definitions and the customer's quality definition. And if that is the case, the customers get disappointed and leave, or at least are not prepared to pay the required price. So let's have a look at the customer's experiences of quality and the customer's perception of quality. This is a model developed uh, a long time ago and tested in several situations and several industries, and it turns out to be very robust. What it says is that customer first, the customers first of all perceive quality. It's not an objective assessment of quality. It's a perception of quality. And this perception is based on two dimensions, the outcome and the process. Uh, that is what's called technical quality, what they get, functional quality, how they perceive the process leading up to the technical quality. And the technical quality, that is the outcome of the service process. Outcome of the delivery, the maintenance, the any type of process that the uh, supplier or firm is, is, is uh, going through with the customer. Now, now the functional quality is totally different and much more complicated. It relates to the people, the systems, the processes, the digital solutions uh, offered by the supplier. The attitudes of people, the behavior of people, service employees, for example, the accessibility of the firm, its people, the service, punctuality, trustworthiness of the operations, the service capes, that is the surrounding in which service is performed, and the capability to handle failures and mistakes. And it turns out that firms normally are very well prepared to take care of the technical quality, the outcome dimension, 
and much less prepared to take care, take care of the process or functional quality dimension. However, if you look at this a little bit closer, what are the managerial effects of all this? We, we, we need to take a look, look at what's important from the customer's point of view and what is important from the firm's point of view. Now, from the customer's point of view, the outcome, technical quality is more or less a hygiene factor. Not always, but mostly. But the process, the functional quality perception dominates customer's perception of quality. Now, from a management point of view, there are some key implications of uh, the customer's quality definition. We must distinguish between what is important from the customer's point of view and what is important from the firm's point of view. From the customer's point of view, frequently the outcome or technical quality is a hygiene factor. But the process, the functional quality perception dominates. It doesn't always have to be only a hygiene factor, but mostly it's like that. It's the functional quality that dominates the customer's quality perception. This means that from the firm's point of view, it is important to understand that the outcome, the technical quality offered must be on a good enough level. But the firm competes with functional quality, with the process perception. And this seems to be rather problematic in many firms to really understand the importance of the process dimension uh, of the customer's quality definition. I'll, I'll say this again. The outcome or technical quality must be on a good enough level, but the firm competes with functional quality, with the process perceptions. And this requires new skills, new understandings. Service management can offer that. Now, I want to combine the quality model and with uh, marketing at this point. Uh, first of all, perceived quality is a matter of what did the customer expect. A good, high experiences uh, means that expectations have to be on a high level. But if expectations are on a too high level compared to the experiences, perceived quality will be low. Now, experiences, of course, is the outcome of uh, the technical quality, the outcome, and the functional quality, the process. How the firm manages to keep promises made. And promises are made through marketing, sales, previous experience of the customer, personal needs by the customer, references, word of mouth, social media, customers been exposed to. That is how promises are made. Now, the traditional external marketing, including sales, takes care of this part of customers' quality perception. We can talk about full-time marketers, those who are professionals in marketing and sales. But experiences, again, is something that is taken care of by what has been termed part-time marketers by my colleague Egat Gummerson from Stockholm University. Part-time marketers. Now, that is the service technicians in the industrial maintenance firm or any other person who is not in a marketing department or a marketing professional, but still meets and interacts with customers and influences the customer's perception of the firm. And then we have to enable promise making and keeping. That is called internal marketing in, the service, uh, market, in service marketing theory. In, at later stages, we return to all this. But the important thing here is to understand that Managing quality is integrated with marketing and they should not be kept apart, these two managerial processes. If you look at uh, how customers, <clears throat> based on a number of studies, uh, basically perceive quality, we kind of, for example, find these seven characteristics. The first one is related to the outcome, professional professionalism and skills. The five that follow are related then to the process, the functional quality, attitudes, behaviors, accessibility, flexibility, 
reliability, trustworthiness, service recovery, service escape. And the final and seventh one, reputation and credibility is related to the image, which, as you saw on, on the two previous slides, also has a, a role in the customer's perception of uh, quality. There are, of course, also other uh, classifications of, of customer, uh, customers' ways of, of, of perceiving uh, quality. The most well-known one is the ServQual one by uh, Parasurum and Zeithamel and, and, and Berry. Now, finally, let me look at uh, a model that uh, helps us to understand the managerial challenges. It's also by Parasurum and Zeithamel and Berry. It's called the GAP model. Um, from the consumer's point of view, again, the expected service is based on their past experiences, their personal needs and word of mouth, social media, and a number of uh, uh, other uh, uh, issues as well. Now, if we then look at the firm side of it, there is a quality management process that if it doesn't flow in a uh, appropriate way, creates problems and problems may grow, and in the end, it will, may lead to a negative perception of quality. So, let's look at it. It's called the gap model. So, gaps, gaps are developed. The first gap is uh, based on the possibility that management perceives customer expectations wrong. And if this is the case, service quality specifications are probably not uh, set in a proper way, and a second gap follows, and a third gap follows, because service, the service process, what is delivered and how the process is taken care of, will grow the problem. And then marketing communication may even make the problems even worse, because there may be a fourth gap between, between what in indeed is delivered and what the service quality expectations uh, uh, say that should be delivered. And the customer's expectations are set in a totally wrong way. And the result is, of course, a fifth gap, which means bad perceived service quality. Now, this model is helpful because it shows management how we have to go through a number of managerial processes to make sure that customer perceived quality in an acceptable way in the end. Now, the next lecture again will be on analyzing service orientation and customer focus and about the strategic management trap. Thank you.